It's 7 a.m. Uh, this is a typical morning for this part of Japan at this time of year. It's about minus 2 degrees centigrade right now. There's not much precipitation in winter where we are, whether that's uh, rain or snow. Yes, hardly ever rains and it certainly very rarely snows. In fact, since I've been here, since 2017, it's probably only snowed once properly where it's settled on the ground. Now, I will show you just recently it did snow again um, and it was quite beautiful this is a lot of footage which um, I'll get to later in the video but in this video I, I, what I wanted to do is I'll show you what it's kind of like here in this house in uh, winter you know Japanese houses have uh, quite a reputation particularly this old style Japanese house have quite a reputation of being cold which is certainly justified because there's not much insulation and more than that there really are lots of air gaps, as I'll show you in the video as well. So I got myself a, um, a thermal camera, an infrared camera, and it's quite interesting to see uh, where all of the cold is coming from. And our house is certainly cold, I think by um, modern Western standards at least. But it's not too bad, it's pretty comfortable. We have a wood-burning stove, which I'll show you uh, a little bit more closely. Uh, and we also use a kerosene stove as a kind of form of instant heat. So I'm in the Yengawa now and I've just come from outside where it was minus two. Here it is five degrees. So it's definitely cold. And that's because we've got these big windows here they're not airtight there are some gaps also they're single pane so we need to replace these at some point but that will be pretty expensive especially if we want to do it properly with say triple glazed windows and maybe wooden or hybrid frames something like that separating the living area from the yengawa is this shoji these shoji are called yukimi which literally means snow viewing whereby we can lift the bottom screen to reveal glass by which we can see outside and also let light in. Though mostly paper, it's surprisingly effective at retaining heat, even with the gaps between the panels. I should really fix that. During the day, when the sun comes out, the Ngawa warms up and we can turn the heating off and open the shoji till the sun goes to the other side of the house in the afternoon. We don't use the washitsu so much, so we usually keep the fusuma closed during winter. And the main doors allow us to completely seal off the genkan and engawa. Where we live in Japan is not so far from the 36th parallel north, a similar latitude to such places as Nashville, Tennessee, Central California, the Mediterranean and North Africa. In winter, northwesterly winds bring cold air from Siberia to Japan along with heavy snowfall to the Sea of Japan side and the mountains down the middle, but sunny weather to its Pacific side where we live. So we don't get snow very often, but last month it did snow for the first time in a few years and I think the house actually looks more beautiful in the snow. The Yukimi lived up to their name and the kids had a lot of fun playing in it.
Our main source of heat is a wood burning stove. We get our wood for free from neighbours and also by keeping our eyes out in the neighbourhood. People are usually more than happy for us to take cut down trees off their hands. Although the wood is technically free, there is time spent cutting, splitting and stacking wood. I enjoy doing this and it helps keep me fit, but in this area buying ready to use firewood is quite expensive so I wouldn't recommend a wood stove as a main source of heat if you're not keen on doing a lot of the work yourself. Overnight the house cools down quickly, it's generally around 8 degrees inside when the temperature outside is minus 2. The wood I'm using here is sakura, cherry blossom tree, that we got from our neighbour who works as a gardener. It's not great firewood to be honest, but I'm generally happy to use anything we get for free as long as it's dry. We have found the V method the best way for us to start the fire as it keeps the starter paper in place and requires very little kindling. We found this kerosene stove in our house. This is the footage from just after we bought the house back in 2019. You might remember it from my very first house tour video. Kerosene is a very common heating fuel here in Japan, where central heating isn't so common, even in new houses. I wasn't so keen to use kerosene, but first thing in the morning when the house is cold, it provides a lot of heat very quickly.
Once the wood stove gets up to temperature, we usually turn off the kerosene stove. To circulate the heat, we have this ceiling fan. Here, due to the height of the ceiling, we set it to push hot air down rather than to draw air up. We also have some circulator fans to push warm air down off the ceilings in other rooms. To help identify the cold spots in the house, I got this thermal imaging camera that attaches to my phone. This is the cheaper version. Maybe I should have got the Pro version, which has better resolution, but is $200 more expensive. But it's good enough, and I've found it very useful. I think it's going to be pretty handy as I go through and try and fix some of the problem areas in the house. I've put the link in the description if you want more info on it. If it bleeds, we can kill it. When we were renovating the house, we mainly focused on insulating the walls and the ceilings. We decided to do the windows later, mainly for budgetary reasons. This corner here is probably the coldest in the house, and that's mainly because of these large single pane windows. I'm filming this at 9pm and it's about 2 degrees outside. Our target temperature in the house is 21 degrees centigrade. Now we don't always get that and it depends on how well the wood stove is burning, but we do get roughly in that ballpark most of the time and it's pretty comfortable. That built-in cabinet beneath the bay window over there, that's a problem as you can see and that's because it's completely uninsulated. I'm happy with the walls, the insulation seems to be doing a pretty good job and the floors look fine too. That ceiling has insulation but it's the original insulation that came with the house so it's pretty old so I think I'm going to replace that and make it thicker as well. I know there are other cheaper solutions than buying new windows. For example there's secondary glazing or inner windows whether that be glass or uh, plastic uh, which you can get pretty cheaply at the uh, home centre but there's not enough room to install them while keeping the shoji and we want to keep the shoji. The shoji is not too bad as an insulator as you can see. In a house like this with so many large windows I think it's worth getting triple glazing even though it's much more expensive. We'll probably replace the windows bit by bit as budget allows. If we were renovating a house like this in a colder climate, say up in the mountains, I definitely want to replace these windows at the same time as renovating the walls. For some reason that lower wall there doesn't have any insulation. And this ceiling doesn't have much insulation at all either. Above these ceilings is the attic, which has lots of air gaps that allow a lot of the hot air to escape. So I'm gradually working through some of the problem areas like this door. It's not perfect, but better than before. I'm going to apply tape like this to some of the other windows and maybe the shoji as well. The house is obviously not particularly energy efficient, but I'm going to try to improve things as we go along. But there is a certain limit to what we can do in a house of this style. So as I was finishing up editing this video, it snowed again overnight and it looks pretty nice. But I have to admit, snow maybe twice a winter is probably enough for me. 
So I'm going to do a part two to this video where I go through the house and try and um, fix up all of those insulation issues as well as uh, some of the air leaks. So if you like the video, please press the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I've got a few more videos uh, in the pipeline. I've got a couple of visits to other places as well as more videos of my house here. So stay tuned and I'll see you next time.